Today we will be discussing Edgar Allan Poe's poem, For Any. This poem was written by Poe on April 28, 1849. This poem was one of Poe's most realistic and correspondent to his life, as it was written six months before he died. The reoccurrence of both Gothic and Romantic elements emphasizes the speaker's mysterious thoughts on death and highlights the discussion of the loss of his loved one. The poem begins with the Romantic element of the narrator mentioning the loss of innocence as he and his lover are now adults, and says, The lingering illness is over at last. The speaker begins the stanza with, Thank heaven, which, it, which is a display of gratitude. By writing this, he is describing the death of his lover in a more positive meaning rather than negative. This ties back to the romantic element of innocence. Now that they are adults, life is not as enjoyable as it was in their youth, and therefore the speaker's love is in a better place. The speaker also uses a metaphor by referring to life as the fever called living. This gives the impression that his life views as an illness, which portrays it as something undesirable, which is ironic because his loved one is relieved of her pain through death. Life is generally looked upon as a happy light, as if something is full of life and is in a good place. However, the speaker looks at it as if the person who had died is better and happier dead rather than alive, giving death a positive connotation. In addition, he states that the fever had been conquered at last. This furthers the idea that the speaker feels as though his lover was happier in death than in life. In the next few stanzas, it appears as though the speaker is accepting or almost welcoming his death. He uses first person to show that he is shorn of his strength, and he is experiencing pain through coping with the loss of Annie. The repetition of the statement, me dead, emphasizes his constant thoughts of death and what it might entail for him and his deceased lover. This shows that he is not afraid to die, since he would be with his lover once again. This is shown through, the word, through his word choices composedly to describe himself calmly at rest, and that he feels better knowing that he may see her again. In the next stanza, the speaker describes the loss of pain that Annie was experiencing by saying, The moaning and groaning, the sighing and sobbing, are quieted now. This shows that a great amount of pain has ended. This idea of sufferings being ended is repeated in the next stanza when he says, The sickness, the nausea, the pitiless pain have ceased. Again, displaying the idea that Annie's pain has ended with her death. The speaker looks to find the positives in her death by mentioning that her sickness has ended. With the fever that maddened my brain, with the fever called living that burned in my brain. The next stanza describes the torture of a thirst for the Nap Naphthalene River that has been quenched. The Naphthalene River represents the flow of depressed thoughts that the speaker is experiencing. By saying that he has a quenched for all thirst, the speaker means that he has been relieved of these thoughts and that they have faded. We determined that the description of the river in the stanza contributed to an overall romantic element of the usage of the water symbol and the deep symbolism of nature. The following stanza mainly describes the innocence of Annie in death. The first line says, of a water that flows with a lullaby sound. Water is commonly associated with purity and innocence, as well as a representation of nature. The speaker is showing that he thought that Annie was an innocent being, and clear and pure like water. It also states that there was a spring, but a very few feet underground, from a cavern not very far down underground. Here the speaker uses the repetition of the term underground to represent death, and that the water that represented Annie was already moving towards her death. The next stanza has the gothic element of repetition with the constant usage of the word bed to end phrases. Poe uses this while writing, and narrow my bed, in a different bed, and such a bed. The organization of this stanza is interesting to note because it has one main idea. However, Poe separates his sentences into short phrases that can mean individual different things. The next stanza is mainly romantic because it features the idea of innocence being glorified. The speaker appears to be conflicted on whether to forget or regret the innocence of his old life. He says, My tantalized spirit here blandly reposes, forgetting or never regretting its roses. In saying tantalized spirit, the speaker is referring to himself and his tormented life. Roses is a common symbol for innocence. It seems that the speaker is saying how, now that it is over, he does not know whether he should try and remember his youth and the time in which he was innocent, or to completely forget about it and instead live his life as an adult. 
The speaker uses antithesis with forgetting and regretting. To forget would be to no longer think about it all, or to regret, which would be to think about it all the time. To the use of antithesis helps to show the struggle that the speaker is facing. The next stanza continues to use the romantic representation of plants and nature to express his love for Annie and her innocence, as well as continuing the use of the tormented life as represented by a tantalized spirit. It specifically uses pansies, rosemary, and rue to represent different feelings. When the speaker states that so quietly lying it fancies a holier odor about it of pansies, he is describing that his self-torment evolving into loving thoughts towards Annie. It also says that a rosemary odor commingled with pansies with rue and the beautiful Puritan pansies, which shows that he holds some regret about her death, but is still loyal to his lover. Also, the term Puritan represents modesty and minimalistic ideals, meaning that he had a minimal amount of loving thoughts towards her. The next few stanzas continued to use the romantic element of water by talking about bathing, by the speaker saying, and so it lies happily, bathing in many, drowned in a bath. He is using the water element to symbolize cleansing. His spirit is bathing in the beauty of Annie, and it is described as happy. The speaker is using the water element to purify his spirit and make it feel happy, knowing that it can imagine the beauty of Annie still. These couple of stanzas also include literal aspects of the speaker's actions. The speaker says, She tenderly kissed me, she fondly caressed me, and then I fell gently to sleep on her breast. Poe intends for this sentence to be literal because it represents the last goodbye he has to Annie. The word choice that Poe uses in this stanza add to the calm mood that this aims to communicate. He uses tenderly, fondly, and gently to add to the calm, soft actions he performs. The following stanza switches to a more gothic theme, which uses, which, with use of supernatural elements, the speaker talks about how, when the light was extinguished, she covered me warm, and she prayed to the angels to keep me from harm. In this, the speaker is thinking back on times when he was either ill or depressed, and Annie supported him and helped him through it. But use of supernatural element of angels, the speaker is able to show how his love for Annie uh, and him relied on the supernatural elements in their everyday lives. The next stanza continues with the gothic theme, but instead utilizes repetition. By continuously repeating the words, me dead, it creates a somewhat dreary setting. However, in using words like composedly and contentedly, the speaker is able to show how he was calm and is not afraid of dying. He seems convinced that his lover would want him dead in order for them to be together again. Because he believes this, he does not fear death and almost seems to welcome it, because he believes that his Annie would rather have him with her instead of alive. In the final stanza of the poem, the speaker uses romantic elements to summarize his love for Annie. When he states that, his heart is brighter, and all the many stars in the sky. He uses the romantic element of nature in the stars to display that their love was stronger than anything else. He also says that it sparkles with Annie, it glows with the light of the love of my Annie, meaning that all of his love and everything he has is for Annie. Finally, he says, with the thought of the light of the eyes of my Annie. This is when he states that thinking of her makes his love for her even stronger. The romantic element of nature being a symbol is heavily used in this stanza. In conclusion, the poem For Annie by Edgar Allan Poe emphasizes Poe's questioning of death and the mysteries the speaker encounters while thinking about the death of his recently passed lover. These thoughts are shown through the multiple romantic and gothic elements in the poem. Throughout the poem, Poe incorporates the romantic elements of innocence being lost and symbols of nature, such as the water element to represent purity and the flowers, while also including gothic elements, such as supernatural elements, angels, as well as the repetitions of main ideas, which is found in multiple stanzas. Not only does the speaker question the death of his lover, but he further assesses whether he should end his life to rejoin her in the afterlife. His conflicting thoughts are evident through the word choice, which visually displays how the speaker is coping with Annie's death. Overall, For Annie greatly displays the mysterious concepts of life and death through the eyes of a speaker who has recently lost his loved one, which are emphasized through both romantic and gothic poetic elements.